I want to show you two things. One, how to register your X1 controller utility. And second, once your utility has been activated, then how do you go about tweaking and controlling the parameters and tune your motor? So let's get started. When you launch the configuration tool, which is called the X1 tool, currently it is at 1.0.8. When you launch it, you'll get this screen. So in this particular case, I'm already logged on. I've already registered, so it shows my username and password pre-populated. But you will see this screen without your username and password when you launch it for the first time. First thing you want to do is click on registration. This will come up with the organization here. You can type in whatever your org or name, uh, doesn't matter. I, I typed in what wagons. That is how I was registering it. Gender not needed. I would just say other and title. I would just say doctor, right? Just doesn't really matter. Here, you will type in your first name. I'm just typing to show you. And your surname is the last name. So in this, my case, it is Fatak, and but it will be your last name. And this is important because this software, rather this login is tied to your name and last name. So if we need to ever retrieve it, we need the verification. Mobile, you can give your mobile number, whatever your mobile number is. So in this case, mine is plus one, six, one, seven, six, seven, eight, eight, seven, six, two. You can have your own and uh, that's fine. So let's just put that in actually, one, six, one, seven, six, two. Password, uh, and this is where I wanna show you something that uh, you will notice. We require a strong password. So I'm gonna put in a strong password that I know will go through. It needs at least eight characters and at least two special characters with one uppercase. So just know that, you know, just make something that is stronger and has a couple of special characters and a uppercase. The last thing here is an email. When you order the cable, we will actually send you a custom email. So it will be that custom at uh, whatwagons.com. So this will be custom email at whatwagons.com. So we will actually send you this, right? So I'm just using this for illustration purposes. Uh, in some customer's case, it's gonna be 109167 ww for some people it's going to be nine one three sorry three three seven two two ac and so on and so forth so we will send you this information on an email once you have the uh, registration or rather for your registration once you buy the cable and the controller this is very important hold on to that email it is going to be needed to verify now once that is done um and if your password is strong enough, you will do fine. Let me enter a non-standard password. So let's say I'm gonna enter one, two, three, four, just to show you the types of errors you can get. So when you click on subscribe, it's gonna say, well, you know, your password is weak. It's too weak, so you need a stronger password, right? And this is what I was trying to get at. So I'm now going to enter a strong password. Make sure you don't forget it, and then click on subscribe. Once you click on subscribe, what it's going to do is send the information to us and of course to Innotrace, and we will then activate that login for your profile. So it might take like a couple of hours, it might take till overnight, depending on what time you start registering, but you will have it under 24 hours from the time you registered. Okay, so let's say I click okay and then I'm done. Now, once the password is activated, you'll get an automated email saying that your password is automated, uh, activated and your login is ready to go this is where my screen comes in. So what we've done so far is we've shown you how to register. And then once you click on subscribe, how the activation process works, which is it might take between two to 24 hours for us to activate it. Once it's activated, you can now log in using your uh, username and password. And this, this email here is going to be the, that custom email that we were talking about earlier. The password is the password. So in this case, I've set it up, log in, and now I want to go through activated. It's time to log on, 
and see what the screens look like. So I've entered my email, my password, I click on the login button, and now you will see a UI which allows you to control the motor. You will notice very briefly that there was this yellow bar at the bottom. It said programming dongle not found. And the reason for that is uh, it's just trying to detect the cable. If it stays yellow, then uh, just make sure that your cable is properly connected from your computer all the way down to the green programming cable to the motor. And second, that the battery is actually turned on, which means the motor is getting power. If both of those are on, that's fine. If it still shows not found, then the ideal way to do it is I usually just kill this window and start again, and it just detects it. So once in a while, you will run into a situation, but uh, those are the, you know, again, very simple to do. So you will actually see, once you log on, you will notice the, first, the, the screen. In this particular case, the motor is 2412.2. That's the firmware version. And the controller and the serial number version will match the bottom of your motor. If they don't, then you will have to just check to make sure that they, the motor is actually registered. So all registered motors that we've provided so far, those controllers and serial numbers should come up right here. Now, let's go through these parameters. So the first couple of parameters are interesting. Now, remember, what we are trying to do here today is program the following way. We are going to program the first five levels, which is assist one, two, three, four, five, at 750 watts, which is your eco mode. So the entire motor will behave as it is restricted to 750 watts. And the second, which is the traditional sport mode, is which is assist level in this case is six, seven, eight, nine, ten, will behave uh, as if they are sport mode, or rather the 2300 watt mode. Right? So that's really what we're trying to do here. Now let's go back to zero and just go through the parameters. So what is torque? Torque is the actual, again, this is pedal assist. This tells you how much power you need to draw or what level your motor is set at. So for a 750 watt motor, assuming that's a 50 volt battery or 52 volt battery, that number is right around 15 amps. So for 750 watt motor, you will say that, you know, set my max uh, pedal assist to 15 amps. Similarly, for um, a 2300 or 2500 watt motor, you can go as high, but in our case, it will be, I've topped this motor at 45 amps, so it'll be 45 amps, right? So just know that that's how this, this setting controls the power. Second is again, the same thing with the throttle. What you are doing is essentially saying that the throttle cap the throttle at uh, 13 amps, sorry, in this case, 15 amps, or all the way up to 45 amps. Now, this is the parameter which is important for us. So all the watt wagon spikes that we have sold so far, the throttle is restricted to 15 amps from here. Once you get the programming cable, you can obviously override it, but again, we know what settings each login has made, so we can tell you in the back end if somebody's configuring their motor with, let's say, 45 amp throttle and breaking the Hub. So just know that we we do we can identify what the settings are on a per user level. So that's the throttle. Now it's the torque sensitivity. Now this is where uh, you want to again. This is very similar to how the pedal assist versions work, right? So what you're seeing here is when I go to one, sensitivity moves to one. Similarly, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And that's really what this torque sensitivity does. It allows you to uh, still go between uh, cadence and torque sensitivity. And if you tune it all the way up to level 10, at this point, it is a pure cadence sensing motor. And by that, I mean, it operates like a Bafang BBSHD, where it is completely, uh, it, it not, not ign it's completely ignoring the torque sensor signal and it is restricting itself to just the cadence sensing signal, right? So just know that that's what the sensitivity means. The next two parameters are essentially telling you what is the max speed allowed at what assist level. So it may very well be that in this case, I'm just gonna show you at assist level one, when we send our motors out, we don't make any limitations. So all the max speed, whether it's a throttle or a torque, torque means pedal assist, 
we don't cap anything but you can use this profile to cap it so as an example if you are in a protected area or if you're in an area where your maximum speed or torque needs to be limited you can actually just limit it so in this particular case uh, 28 kilometers per hour or 20 km 28 kilometers per hour is right around 20 miles per hour so you can uh, figure out how your torque and cadence sorry uh, torque and throttle speeds are limited again and you can tune this by the profile and the last one here is an interesting parameter that was just added in a couple of revisions ago if you look at any battery pack i'm going to show you this just so you know what i'm talking about so on my panel when when we configure the motors we can actually set the max current the motor can draw and the continuous current the battery can supply. So in our case, we sell battery packs that allow for 45 amps continuous and up to 75 amps peak, even though we search, we only advertise 60 behind the scenes, it can go up a lot. So just notice these two parameters as I'm telling you, as I walk you through this. So what you see here is the torque, which is the pedal assist, is let's say 15 amps. But there are times when even though your pedal assist torque should be limited to 50 amps, you can say, oh, well, you know, when you're going from zero, give me as much power as you possibly can so that even though it's a 750 watt on regular stuff, when I'm pushing the pedal, it'll pull all the juice. So I get that interesting, a really, really responsive behavior off the bat, right? So you could do that uh, on your motor. And that is an important parameter. So you will notice that uh, as I go up, these parameters, when we ship our motors out, these are kind of maxed out. That's another thing that you want to uh, note as well. So, so that's really a quick summary. The torque and the throttle are the power that is provided. Torque is for pedal assist. Throttle is for obviously your throttle. Torque sensitivity is, your, is defining the assist level. So at zero means uh, it is mostly torque assist and at 10 means it is mostly cadence assist or primarily cadence assist max speed under throttle max speed under torque so the way i have said it is even with throttle i don't want to go above let's say 42 miles 42 kilometers per hour which is right around 28 miles per hour right and max on the pedal assist though i want no speed limits so i can push it all the way up to 100 which is 60 miles per hour. Okay, now, and, and the last uh, um, parameter here is the motor torque, which is essentially giving you the peak motor output available at any point in time. Now, now let's look at now configuring the first five levels, which is your sport mode at 750 watts. So let's go to a, a level one and then start doing that. Again, it's fairly simple. All you have to do is move this all the way down to 15, all this way down to 15, and you're good. I want all the torque I can get. I'm not gonna change any of these. One, I just but just notice the torque sensitivity here. That's important for us. We will use that for the 2300 watt or 2500 watt motor. Now next, similarly, I'm gonna now notice this is 15. This is 15, next, 15, and so on and so forth. So I'm just gonna put that 13, doesn't really matter. I just wanna show you that it can be done. 13, 14, 15, oh, come on. 15, 15, and this is 15, and this is 15. And the last one, this is 15, and the throttle is 50, that's it. And now, just like that, you have a version of the motor which under the eco mode will behave as a 750 watt motor and give you the right level of assist. Now, let's do the same thing for 2300 watts. And here is where we wanna change this particular parameter. So 2300 watts, notice that from assist level six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, all the torque and throttle are maxed out but we want the same behavior as a torque sensor. Remember this torque sensitivity, if it goes to 10, that means it starts behaving like a cadence sensor. 
So here, what we are going to do is that at ISIS level six, which is essentially sport mode one, I'm going to move this start level to one. For ISIS level seven, which is sport mode two, I'm going to make the start sensitivity to ISIS level eight, which is sport mode three, I'm going to make the torque level as three, similarly four and five. And that's it, it's done. Now you, all you want to do is click on the right button. Before you click right, just make sure all your settings are correct. So 10, nine, eight, seven, six, this is sport mode five, four, three, two, one. Now we will get the eco mode, which is five, four, three, two, one. And of course at zero, nothing is moving, so we are good. One thing I would always do is, even as you go up to 2300 watt, notice that your throttle is really very powerful. So even at 2300 watt, just to save your uh, components, I don't try, I, I, would, I would recommend limiting it, at, limiting it to 25 amps, so 25 into 50 is right around 1000, 1200 watts. Uh, and that's a lot of torque. Um, it, it's just something, it's just like a best practice I have. If you're, especially if you're trying to do something with, uh, with throttling and you don't know where you're going, uh, just easier to have a controlled throttle than sort of unlimited throttle. So I would always configure my bikes with that. Of course, you can choose not to, but I am just sharing some of the things that I've found to be more practical. So again, going back 10, I'll go all the way back to zero and come back up. So this is zero at rest. Next, this is 750 watt with the throttle limited to 750 watt. Five, this is eco mode one to five. Now, when you switch to sport mode, it behaves as a 2500 watt motor. And this is what you get. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10. And done. Now I click on write. It'll save the information to the firmware, done. You can disconnect the motor, disconnect the battery. You don't necessarily have to do anything. I, I would just kill the program and that's it, we are done. So what we've done today is we've now configured our bike to behave like a 750 watt bike when I want it to in eco mode. And then as a 2300 or 2500 watt bike in sport mode.